In this video, we will learn the best and the worst ways to use ChatGPT for Python programmers. There is no single person that enjoys programming that did not use ChatGPT at least one time. And over the last year, I have been using it every single day that I programmed with Python. So in this video, we will see three great ways and three bad ways of using ChatGPT with hands-on examples. And it's going to be interesting to watch. By the way, let's make this video a little bit more fun here. If you'll guess the exact amount of times that I say ChatGPT in this video and will comment that out, you'll get a shout out in my next upload because unfortunately I could not ignore using this, I can't say it, but, but you, you know what I mean. So let's get started. The first thing that is the most useful thing to do with ChatGPT is requesting a review to the code that you just wrote. Now, this gives you the self-reliance and the independency to write your code by yourself at the first stage and only after that receiving a feedback. And the way that I really like to do this is by asking how a senior developer or how an experienced developer would have written this code. So if we take an example of the code right here, okay, we have a class that is named card. Basically, we are trying to develop a program that processes some payment. And we have card limit set up as a class attribute. And we also have our init method with couple of attributes, number of the credit card or the current amount, which is obviously zero for now. And as long as I pay to a few stuff, then it keeps growing. And we also have a method here that is called is card limit reached, which returns basically a boolean if the self current amount is less than the card limit because otherwise I don't want to process the payment of course. So if we leave the class here then outside of, cl of the class we have an instance that we instantiate and then we use card. Basically we pass in n equals to 60 here. This means that we buy something that costs $60 and then we keep tracking in order to not reach the limit with our card usage. So let's go to the interesting part here. And by the way, the code is going to be available, of course, in my code snippets repository. As usual, you can go ahead and grab the code there and play with it by yourself, asking the questions in different variations. And let's see how I would ask it. So please provide me a... And then I'm going to paste everything here. So quickly reading here, readability and clarity, we actually received some good feedback about it, but the interesting part is to really see how a senior developer would have written this code. Code organization, the code is well organized into a class card which encapsulates related functionality, naming conventions. Okay, so this is a great part and I mismatched that by purpose. Using naming conventions in variables is critical. You don't want to name your variables x, y, z, v1, v2, etc you want to give a full descriptive name to your variables. So the other day that you read your code, you can understand what's going on. And we have also the response. I'm actually going to link the response on the comment section as well. So you can go ahead and read, but I'm going to scroll down to the interesting part. Okay, so let's ask him how a senior developer would have written this. Give an example, something like that. All right, so we are going to see the result. And as you can see here, it's quite fast, but if we, if we scroll up to the use card, then you can see that there is error handling. And that's a very important part of making your program robust enough. You want to make sure that wherever you can handle the errors that are expected and reaching your card limit is a really expected error in that case. Pay jacket. As you can see, again, here is a well done error handling and also pay attention to the doc string. Also pay attention that if I was to skip the if double underscore name equals double underscore main, I would have probably received a feedback about it. But I did want to keep some experience developer level here in order to not receive too much feedback and to not make too hard life to the chat GPT. But anyway, in my opinion, this could be a gold action to take with chat GPT. At first, write your code and then go ahead and receive feedback. On the other hand, what I would not do with ChatGPT after understanding how to receive feedback from my code is to write programs from scratch that might include some topics that I'm not all familiar with. For example, I might be in a stage where I just learned about object-oriented programming, but I did not really challenge myself to write a program or two with classes and with um, child classes or um, writing some more advanced stuff that will include tens of classes in a program. 
So if you go ahead and ask a question like, write me a program that will help me to manage my store and will include a class which will represent products and then after that each product will have its own subclass as well then we are not really going ahead and pushing ourselves with new challenges okay so we probably have a nice program here that has some clothing product class which inherits from the product class by the way this is what i asked for electronic product which also inherits from product class as well so that's a great start but again i might be in a stage that i don't know what super is and that's one of the most confusing topics in object-oriented programming so this is one of the things that i would avoid receiving feedback about a specific area in a code that you wrote in advance will give you much more value than trying to absorb new 40 to 30 lines of code like in this case. In this case, I might be not familiar with a lot of things here, and then I might not even understand what's the purpose of the code from the beginning. And that's why focusing on improvement on specific areas after you've prepared something will give you much more value. So back to our code, another thing that I would use ChatGPT for is for reminding the syntax of various elements in our code. For example, I might be in a stage where I know how to work with files, but I forgot the syntax of it. It's okay to not remember the exact syntax of dozens of elements in each programming language, and that's fine. So in that case, that's actually a realistic situation. I might be in a stage where I don't want to load the credit card number directly inside my code, but I want to load the credit card from a file that is external. I might name it secret.txt or something like that. And there are some ways how to do it. You could take this entire program and ask how can I load the card number of V1 class from an external file, or we could just simply ask how to read from a file with Python. And if we go to our chat GPT here and we provide the code and we say in the code below, I am interested to load the card number of v1 instance from a file named secret.txt show me how to do it and then this will be a fresh reminder of the syntax how to read from a file and obviously it is going to recommend us to read this with the with open context manager you can see that it does it in here in the initialize method or you could also go to a new chat and ask show me in Python, how to read from a file. Okay, and then you will receive a couple of examples and then you can mix this with in your code. So if we go to the previous conversation, I can take this and simply paste this back in PyCharm. So back to PyCharm and I, I can just go ahead and simply paste this in. And I'd also like to do a validation here that I did not lose any critical part of my code. So I can see that all the methods are here and that's actually very nice. So I can just go ahead and create a file here, secret.txt. I could go ahead and create my credit card number. I just added a couple of zeros here, and then the program will work as usual if I run it, okay? Run successfully, probably did not change anything critical. Besides, I added this feature, how to read the credit card number from an external file. So the previous example is indeed one of the things that I trust the most because I personally did not encounter any situation that I received a response with wrong syntax okay if that happened to you let me know by the way but after asking almost thousand of questions or even more i did not encounter a situation where i received a wrong syntax response by chat gpt and if we jump back to the less certain usages of chat gpt is asking the output of some code snippet and there's no real reason for that you have too many tools that will give you the 100 percent correct response as an output of your code you have all your ides you have tons of online editors today that you can ask for an output of a code snippet that you have now on your hand. And that's something that really could not be explained, but I have encountered many situations that I just provided some code snippet to the chat GPT and I received a wrong response. I just received that the output will be something very weird. And let's see what I encountered when I was testing chat GPT limits. Okay, so... I'm going to go to ChatGPT4 right now because I used the ChatGPT4 module when I encountered this weird thing. 
So I'm just going to switch back to a tab that I'm using ChatGPT for in order to explain this. So I was asking what will be the output of this code. And as you can see, we have some list of numbers one to five and we check if the number is even. If the number is even, we square it, we add it to the result. If the number is not even, we don't square it, we add the number of two and then we add it to the result. So the response should be three for one, four for two, we square it, five for three, 16 for four, and then seven for five. And then if we scroll down, there is actually a response by ChatGPT that says that the correct answer is answer number three. I was testing if I could write community questions with ChatGPT. That is how far I went with this tool, okay? So he's, it says three, eight, five, 16, seven. So you can see there is a little confusion here by ChatGPT and that's why I would not trust asking the direct output. I could also prove you that by using copy code here. And now we will go back to PyCharm and then we will simply paste this in and then we will run it. And you can see that the output is 3, 4, 5, 16, 7, although ChatGPT told me 3, 8, etc. So there is really no reason asking the output of some code in ChatGPT. Yes, it might be simple because it's always open probably on your computer, but just try to avoid it in order to not receive wrong responses by ChatGPT and going in wrong learning path for some reason that could be avoided easily. Now, it's no secret that a lot of software developers find writing documentations a boring task. And that is a topic that is really easy to underestimate as a software developer because that is the boring part of some project that you have to go ahead and carry out writing it. And with ChatGPT, I don't really think there are any excuses to skip writing documentations because it does such a good job writing documentations based on the code that you provide to it. So I have to admit it, but I always find myself go back to chat GPT for asking documentations about some parts of my code because it does such a great job summarizing things. And you probably encountered some new GPTs that summer, just basically they summarize everything now. Okay. So writing markdown files for your projects might be something that chat GPT could take care for you. And to just show this, I'm going to go here and I'm just going to say, please write a markdown. So I'm just asking it to Maybe leave some bullets that are going to be blank so I can fill it up later if I'm going to expand this program, okay? All right, so you can see that we have a markdown documentation now. You can see that there is a perfect title. There is also a secondary title. And this is just very nice. This is, is something that is very nice to start with. Go ahead and try to ex expand this by yourself. Actually, the placeholder is only here. Uh, I'm fine with it. I could just copy it and paste this in directly as my documentation. Obviously, I would read it from scratch to see that it really matches my expectations, but there is something to work with. And that is, for me, top five most valuable usages of ChatGPT. So the final thing that I would not recommend doing with ChatGPT is asking for complex tasks with for loops without a safety layer. And that means that, let's take a scenario where you ask ChatGPT to write a Python script that goes ahead and communicates to AWS's API and you ask for deleting a couple of, couple of EC2s there. EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Computing, which means that you write an automation to delete some servers on your AWS account. Don't really do it without a layer of security, which means that first of all, when you write complex tasks with ChatGPT that you run to repeat thousands of times or hundreds of times, then you're probably going to ask for a code that is going to be included with a for loop. And that's why in these cases, I would ask ChatGPT to not write code that will execute the program entirely on all of your thousands of objects, in this case, the thousands of servers that I'm talking about, besides 
provide a security layer. Only show me the code how to do it on one server. And let's show a simpler scenario, but the, <laughs> the deleting service is probably the most like the made out idea, but you could be in a situation that you want to automate these tasks. There are thousands of areas that you can automate with Python. So let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT for something like the following. Let's say that I want to create folders that each folder will represent the day that we are currently at. Today's date is 29th March 2024. I want to create folders 60 days from today in advance. Okay, so these, this means that I want to create 60 folders. So I'm going to ask for such a task. Write me a program. Assuming that today's date is 29, 24, that will create folders for each day until this day, okay? Use Python for the task and that's it. I'm not going to provide anything in addition, okay? So I'm just going to take this and go ahead and run the code on my system. Let's see what will happen. So we have it here. Let's see what will happen if we run it. I'm going to run this and you can see that bunch of folders were created. Now, let's say that I don't like the format of the dates in, this fo in these folders. I'd like to have first the day and then the month and only after that the year. So this means that I have to go ahead and delete all the folders now, okay? But that's actually okay. Make talking about creating folders is not a harmful action. But if we talk about writing an automation for deleting files from your system that are 30 days or older, or actions like deleting servers from cloud, like I told earlier, or changing critical files names. These are the areas that you really want to be careful and run your code on only one object at first, okay? And so that's why I would enhance this code by myself to only check this on one object at first, or I would ask ChatGPT for doing it. So let's go ahead and delete everything here. First step. And then the next step will be to only make this to work on one object. And the way that we can do this in this case, we have a while loop that checks if current date is less than or equal to the end date, okay? So in this case, if we were to change the month to three, or let's actually copy this line with control D, okay? If we were to change this to three and this to 30 and then comment this out, then this will give us what we need. At first, we test ourselves with only one object, okay? So if we go ahead and run this, then you can see that it ran it on two objects, but again, I'm not doing something harmful that might be harmful on multiple objects. Take the service example again. So in that case, if I like the result, okay, let's go ahead and run it through all the year, okay? Because I like the result. Um, and actually, I did not change the formatting. You can do this by really changing the orders here. So let's say that we really like to change it very quickly. I will take the person D and put the person them here and then delete the dashes at the end, okay? I'm going to delete everything here and then I'm going to run our program. Okay, so you can see that this is in the desired format. Now I could go ahead and run this program on the rest of the year because that's the format that I like. So this means that I can go ahead and say here 12, here 31, and run the entire program. And that's going to create, wow, a lot of folders. But only after you're satisfied with the result of your program that is going to run while loops or for loops, then run the rest of the program. Always give the instruction to ChatGPT to only check at first on one object. Your object could be folder, server, or renaming files that are critical each example that I told you. And that's something that I really recommend when using ChatGPT. Be careful when you run program in for loops and while loops, and that will be it. So I really hope that you took something new from this video. I know that there are tons of resources about ChatGPT, AI, everyone on YouTube, but I feel like on my welcome back video, I really wanted to share something that I gained by myself after asking over than thousands of questions of ChatGPT and give my own tips to you so that you can maybe take something new from it and that will be it if you enjoyed in here please be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel much more to come and see you soon